one of the things that I know as a neuroscientist, having dealt with uh, many patients over more than 20 years, um, having to do with coma and alterations in their level of consciousness, is that memory formation is very demanding. Very common for people who have something like meningitis or head injury to wake up in an ICU, start coming around, and they start getting some awareness, some interaction with people around them. Uh, and yet I know that, uh, as a general rule, they won't remember those first few days. They start remembering things days later as they're out on a neuro step-down unit or something like that. They're not remembering those first hours and days when they uh, first come out of a coma from head injury or meningitis or stroke or whatever. Uh, and so in that sense, I'm a little perplexed that I have such rich, intricate memories uh, from my experience. Uh, I, I know initially when I was wrestling with this whole um, project of, of a neuroscientific uh, explanation and writing up the whole process, how did this happen, uh, I was always in the back of my mind was that lurking question, okay, well fine, and then how did it get laid down in memory? Uh, and of course I was very haunted because I remembered so much from actually before my first awareness of people around me in the ICU. Um, and I, I'm not sure where, where I can go with that, uh, although I must say that once I realized that, uh, that so much of the phenomenon based on neuroscientific principles occurred outside of my brain, then in a sense that kind of took the pressure off from trying to define the molecular and anatomic mechanisms for laying down those memories into my uh, brain's memory system. And I think that there are just other, other channels where that kind of information may come in. However, you have seen into that realm yes. and you have tapped back into it. Do you think that your brain, your specific personal brain, has been remodeled in a way to give you access or to have tunnels maybe through that veil? I think, uh, in a sense, it has. I think, um, certainly from what I went through initially by having the near-death experience and having that conscious awareness, uh, in a sense, that opened up some pathways in my brain, uh, an awareness that that existed. Uh, it, it existed someplace in my mind. And uh, uh, over that six-day course of the Gateway Voyagers, uh, I was able to accomplish many of my goals that had to do with tapping back into that realm. And I think that does have to do with new pathways. Um, I think so much of this, I mean, a lot of memory formation has to do with uh, frequencies and electrical potentials, setting up new synaptic connections, uh, and kind of some of the general molecular and uh, electrical uh, function that gives rise to memory. And there's no doubt in my mind that what I went through at the Monroe Institute that was very intricately guided by three skilled facilitators over six days enabled me to get way down deep into an area where I could re-explore some of the areas that I was first introduced to with my near-death experience. And uh, that was a very exciting and wonderful goal of that particular week and I look forward to uh, continuing to use and develop that technique uh, to help me to explore that region much more deeply.